A lot of people talking about you being back, especially for WrestleMania, part of this press conference. Yeah. You've always been in shape. So I think us as wrestling fans have never been like, well, The Rock's not in shape. That's why he's not coming back into the ring. Is it schedule? Is it a point of your life? Is it a reflection point where you're like, I need to go back home and prove some stuff to myself and to everything? Or why do you think now is the time to be back in wrestling as big as you are with the WWE? Um, a few things, though. You, you, you talk about uh, getting in shape and ring shape. As you guys know, football players, like, man, it's, whatever it is, the sport that you do, you do it, you love it, you leave it, it's tough to come back to it, right? If you guys had to put the pads back on, lace the cleats up, put the helmet back on, yes. and roll, it's tough to do. In yes. the world of pro wrestling, I haven't done that in a very long time. So uh, when I do go back to the ring at WrestleMania, the most important thing is a training camp, which has already started. I have multiple rings set up over in Hawaii. I have a ring set up uh, on the West Coast, and we're, we're full on in camp. How do you feel? Uh, hurting. <laughs> the body's hurting because it's hard. It's hard to adjust back. But in a way, it's like riding a bike. Like, I was very lucky in my career that I was somewhat of a ring general and knowing the ring and where to go and where to be at certain times uh, when I needed to. But the training camp part of it is hard because you could work out on the weights. You could do all the stuff that, you, you know, you want to do. Mm -hmm. But until you go back in the ring and you take those falls, those slams, those suplexes, things like that, there's nothing like it. I, was, I assume you're filming your entire training camp right now. We're filming it, brother. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We but by the way, to answer your question, it's an important one on why. Yeah. Why? Dude, I love it. And that's why. I don't have to go back. I've been lucky enough to get, this point, get to this point in my career. But... I love what I do. I love getting in there, and I love pro wrestling. It's who I am. It's what I was born to do, and I was born in this business. But also, from the second that Roman Reigns years ago said, I'm the head of the table and I'm the head of this bloodline. Greatest of all time. That's when our story began. So it's converging now. It's converging to WrestleMania. I understand the passion, uh, which we are going to address and we'll get to today. We could even get to right now, but at the end of the day. Okay, let's talk about the passion. That yes. has come from this D-Butt Attitude Era, okay? Yeah. AJ, Great. Attitude Era. Mm. Con Man, a little bit later. Tone Diggs, Attitude Era, though. Okay? They're not the ones, though, that are filling the arenas right now, currently. Right. They're the ones that watch from outside. Yeah. And from being back in with Raw, it's like the arena, Cody wrote, let's go. This guy's put this company on his back. But from the people who've been watching wrestling for, like, let's say 20 years or whatever, it's like, wait a second, this is our generation's guy yes. now coming. But you're representing, yeah. like, our... This feels like a generational conversation that's taking place between two iconic wrestling families. Obviously, Obviously the Rhodes family, yes. and obviously your guys' bloodline is huge. Yeah. Did you expect the reaction to be what it was? When we haven't even made anything official, nothing's even been made official. Nothing's official. Nothing has no. been made official. <laughs> no, nothing has been deemed this or that, or a story isn't being end. But like, did you expect the reaction whenever you came back to be what it was, or was it kind of uh, kind of came out of nowhere? With regards to WrestleMania, Rock and Roman together. Yes, with uh, Cody Rhodes. With, with, with Cody here. Yes. Uh, I expected it. We expected it because it's right there. Again, you go back, and again, you like to think, hey, I got my finger on the pulse. We all try to keep the finger on the pulse. Ultimately, what the fans want and what they're saying. And sometimes, oftentimes, as you guys know, in sports and entertainment and anywhere, what regardless of the vertical of business you're in, there's a wave of noise that happens right out of the gate. Immediate. That you want to just pause for a second. Let's not make any rash decisions. Let's wait and see how it all shakes out and see what happens from there. So it was just a matter of waiting. So now I was not surprised at it. I did expect it. Uh, but here, here's the fun part about this is... You have, and I've, by the way, I've known Cody for a long time. He's a buddy of mine. The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, and my old man, soul man, Rocky Johnson, they were boys. They tag teamed together down in Florida. We used to go over to the Rhodes house a lot all the time when I was growing up. And so we're tight in that way. I love Cody. I love his passionate fans. Then there's the other passionate uh -huh. fans yeah. of Cody. Yep. And they're called the, uh, what's that? Oh, Cody Crybabies. Yeah. Oh, that's what they're okay, called. all right. Okay, yeah. got it. I didn't, I didn't know the name that was coming. It was the it. Cody Crybabies. Yeah, okay. And these are grown ass men. And uh, Cody got to finish his story. <laughs> he got to finish yes. his story right now. It's like, wait a second. Hold on. <laughs> hey, Dad, you want to go outside and play catch with me? Not now. Cody's got to finish <laughs> And I'm upset. The wife comes in. Hey, honey, do you want to go have sex? Not now. Cody's got to finish his story. At the end of the day, 
mean, <laughs> look, you got the Cody crybabies and you have the Cody fans and then you have Cody himself and there's a clear distinction between the three. But The Rock says this, those Cody crybabies, the ones for every 10 tweets, they're shoving a chicken McNugget in their mouth. <laughs> for every 20 tweets, they're shoving two McNuggets up their ass. What? The Rock says this, all you got to do is sit back, know your role, shut your mouth and enjoy the ride that The Rock is going to take your candy asses on. So hashtag that. Hashtag shut your bitch ashes up. Hashtag Cody crybabies. Yes, the man. Okay. So, yes. That's the fun part. Yes, that's go. wrestling. Of what we do. Yeah, that's yeah. wrestling. It's pro wrestling. That's WWE. And it's awesome. And I can't wait for uh, for this afternoon at yes. T-Mobile. Yeah, there's so much. I mean, uh, <laughs> Man, that felt good. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Did it feel, yeah, that felt good. I did. That, that, you're talking about the By the way, uh, your eyes changed. It's like there was a shift in your eyes. You could feel yeah. the shift yeah. in the room change. Yeah. Right? The air changed in the room when so, I went in that direction. So that was, we grew up on that, though. Yeah. So, like, uh, obviously, we still use gifts from those days. You're, uh, shut up. Bitch is oh. uh, one of the greatest <laughs> responses of any tweet, pretty much, that yep. you kind of want to have it. Uh, do you miss that? Do you miss getting out and... Because that's a character, obviously. Now, and you can't do that in real life, what you just did there. You can do it in wrestling, though. You can go up to an eight-year-old kid in wrestling and say, hey, you suck, kid. And then it's just, like, expected. Like, that is... <laughs> like, I did that. I was a heel at NXT, and they had... It was during COVID, so they had, like, hockey boards, glass, and there was, like, a, a dad and a kid, and they both had Adam Cole shirts on they were booing me and I look at this eight-year-old kid I go you suck kid and then you you're a piece of trash to the dad and then just walk away and it's like this is the greatest this is the greatest entertainment form of all time I assume that as you're doing everything else and you told us in Colorado like when I'm doing my movie press junkets it's not like this it's not like this. there's nothing like the WWE whenever you walk out there in the arena just goes absolutely absurd and they show that you have actual goosebumps yep. when you just got back into that the Cody crybabies know your role chicken nugget that whole thing I assume it feels good to get back in there it's a nice reminder of everything that you are I assume in the middle of all all the shit you have going on in your life Dude, it's the it's the it's the it's the special place. It's the special thing in my life that I love and I hold on to and I protect because if you think about it, when we were on the show in Colorado, I knew that you know, I don't get opportunities like this where we could just hang and chop stuff up and talk about everything from this all the way to over here. But in that for that world of pro wrestling where I'm able to do that and get into You that. are an asshole. asshole. Dude, yeah. that 20 was minutes straight. Awesome. Uh, Can't do that and we could have kept it going on, no, by the yes, way. Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing like that, by the way, which, is, which again, it goes back to, it's why I love it. It's why I go back. And, y you know, the... The, the funny thing about the, whether it's the Cody Crybabies or whether it's the, the surge of the net doing its thing within the first hour of information dropping, at the end, end of the day, there's a few things that happen. My music hits, the place goes bananas. Look, when we went in Birmingham and we did that big face off with Rock and Roman Reigns, you know, that was a long time coming. And if you think back from Birmingham, from San Diego, when I said, should I sit at the head of the table, to back when we were on in Colorado saying, hey, boys, we were supposed to do Rock and Roman at WrestleMania 39. Yes. And it never happened. Like, everything is strategic. Everything is well thought out. And the there's reason a I'm story to up, be told there? There's a story to be told. No. There's a longer story. Oh, to there's be told. another what? story. Is that right? No, I didn't know there was a potential. But by the way, but the key, I feel, is when you're in this position, I'm very lucky and fortunate to be in this position, is to also make sure, man, that you're flexible along the way. Like, the goal, the the... The North Star goal to me is to continue to build WWE as a global brand. And if this is our world of pro wrestling fans, and it's a big fan base, as you guys know, going into WrestleMania, let's cast the net way past this. Bring new people in so they can enjoy the product and keep them here. And in order to do that, let's keep our eyes on the North Star, but let's be open to how we get there. Long gamer, bud. Bring some old people Long. back in, too. Yes. Yeah.